Hi, and welcome to the Alitech Introduction of Managed Print Services. My name is Ken Buck, and I am a Solution Architect for Alitech. In this video, we will explain what managed printing is and how it can help your customers. The goal of Managed Print Services, or MPS, is to enable customers to gain control of their printing costs. A welcome side effect of MPS is that it often reduces the total cost of printing while enabling print job security. MPS enables customers to gather metrics on print usage. For example, how many prints from which department are made on which printers using which features. The data can then be used to optimize printer deployment. For example, so that faster printers are deployed where bottlenecks are discovered. This slide presents an example of the printing environment before managed printing is introduced. This environment consists of numerous desktop or laptop clients with a mix of black and white in color workgroup multifunction printers as well as smaller private use inkjet and laser personal printers. In this environment users can print any quantity of any document to any printer. Users are not aware of the cost of printing in color or black and white so most documents end up being printed in color. Users are also not aware that the cost of printing on an inkjet printer or small laser jet printer is higher than it would cost to print that same document on a workgroup multifunction printer. Users are also not aware that a cost and environmental savings could be realized if duplex printing was used more often instead of printing on only one side of a page. In this environment, printing costs are not controlled at all. Implementing MPS begins with identifying the individual who will initiate a print job that is typically done with some sort of authentication at the printer. Jobs belonging to that individual can then be released for printing. Most business clients provide their employees with some form of identification or employee badge. These badges can be implemented with a number of different technologies as is shown on this slide. Let's spend a moment reviewing some of the more popular technologies. Starting in the center is the most, most basic technology, the keypad, where a user can enter their personal identification number or PIN. In the upper left hand corner is the one dimensional barcode. These are most prevalent on items purchased in a grocery store, but are also popular as an identification badge. They require a card reader which uses a laser beam to scan the lines and spaces to derive a unique number. On the right are samples of two dimensional barcodes. These codes require a more sophisticated optical scanner to decode the pattern and derive the number or text string. These are more often seen on driver's licenses, package tracking, or to provide a web URL in a magazine article. But they can also be used for identification, where a user's name, phone number, and possibly an email address can be encoded in the image. Next is the magnetic stripe card. These cards can contain up to three tracks of information and are most commonly used in the U.S. for charge cards, hotel access cards, and gift cards. These inexpensive cards are often used for access control in libraries, schools, and universities. Biometrics, fingerprint or palm print, can also be used for authentication. But since they are not 100% accurate, they are often best combined with another technology, like PIN, which upgrades security to two-factor authentication, something you have and something you know. Next is the contact mode smart card. These cards contain a microprocessor chip and are often called chip cards. Cards like this require sophisticated certificate-based infrastructure to operate, and in return they provide a higher level of authentication security than offered by magnetic stripe or barcode. This slide shows authentication devices which use radio frequency or RF to communicate with a card reader. On the left are radio frequency proximity cards and key fobs, which are often referred to as contact licks cards or transponders. These are commonly used for building access control and user authentication to manage printing. They are offered in a number of different technologies, which will be shown momentarily. On the right is a smartphone which uses Near Field Communication, or NFC. NFC is a global technology which has evolved from existing ISO standards created by the proximity card industry. Altec provides an application which can enable an NFC phone to be used for authentication. 
Next is the Smart Label. This stick-on label is actually a complete proximity card in itself. They are offered with various transponder technologies such as MyFair or NFC. They can be used to upgrade less sophisticated cards such as barcode or magnetic stripe to radio frequency proximity by simply attaching this smart label. For example, here is a smart label attached to a magnetic stripe card. These smart labels not only emit a unique identification number, but they also contain secure memory which can be used to store credentials. This memory can be locked with a private software key to further enhance security. This slide shows how RFID transponder or card technologies are distributed around the world. HID, Prox, and I-Class have a large footprint in North America. MyFair and Legic have a strong presence in Europe, while Felica is strong in Japan. Card technologies such as Indala, HiTag, AWID, EMRN, and others are represented in pockets around the world. Think globally when you consider the authentication component of managed printing and ensure the card reading technology selected is capable of handling this diverse technology population. Employees travel from site to site and expect their print jobs to be available anywhere they work within the corporate network. This slide shows the changes which are typically made with the introduction of managed printing. First, a managed print server is introduced into the environment. All jobs are then restricted from printing unless the server knows who the job belongs to and unless that job owner actually releases it for printing. Workgroup and network printers are outfitted with proximity card readers, which use the employee's badge to authenticate them at the printer. Users can then release and print their jobs. Less, effective, uh, less cost effective personal printers are removed from the environment, and faster workgroup printers are often added to replace them. Training is provided so employees are made aware of the cost of printing in color versus black and white, and also about the benefits of printing on both sides of paper they are made aware of the high cost of printing on a personal printer. Managed printing can be used to keep track of all prints which are made. This enables more accurate allocation of printing costs to each department and further enables companies to optimize deployment of their printing hardware. This enables allocation of high and low capability equipment where the accounting metrics show they are needed. Card-based authentication means a user's job is not printed unless that user is actually present to release it. In this video we use some terminology which may be new to some viewers. Let's take a few minutes to review some of the terms. Managed print service is the process of adding controls to the printing process. Often managed print services can reduce the cost of printing, but more importantly it enables companies to more fully understand their costs and to properly allocate them. Authentication is the process where a user identifies themselves to the printing system. This is typically done through a proximity card and may be accompanied with a PIN for enhanced security in what is called two-factor authentication. As we mentioned earlier, two-factor means something the user has, which in this case is a card, and something the user knows, which in this case is a PIN. A print server is a network device which can be used to store and route print jobs to their final destination. With some printing solutions, the user's job is held on the server and is released after authentication. In some environments, the server serves as a buffer and holds print jobs which cannot be printed because the printer is out of service. Direct printing is the process most of us are familiar with, where a print job goes directly from the user's desktop to the printer. This is easy to visualize when a personal printer is connected directly to the desktop, but the same work process can operate over the network where jobs go directly from client to the printer. Secure printing is an often used term applied whenever controls are added to printing. Mostly it applies to the process where print jobs are sent directly to the target printer where they are held until they are released by a user. Jobs can be released by proximity card, PIN, or other methods of logging on. This method typically does not require the use of a managed print server. Pull printing is the generic term for the process of submitting a print job to the network and being able to release that job later at whichever printing device the user is standing in front of when they authenticate. It enables users to print anywhere within reach of the print server. There are a number of other items which describe the same process, 
and many of those are trademarked by the particular solution provider. User Interface, or User Interface Panel, or simply UI, refers to the set of controls on the front of a printer or multifunction device. These controls enable a user to configure the device for making a copy, fax, or scan, or to release jobs for printing, or to possibly add finishing options such as stapling. Document management solution companies make and sell services and software, which provide the infrastructure for card-based authentication. They can also provide authorization and accounting services, as well as their own method for delivering pull printing. Thank you for watching and listening to this presentation. Keep in mind that Elotech provides hardware such as RFID card readers and networking devices to support managed print services. If you have any questions or comments on this video, feel free to contact us via phone or email. Shown here is our contact information for North America and for the rest of the world. Thanks again for watching.